Hey guys, how's everybody doing? I had a request from someone to make a diagram uh, how to do the wiring on this uh, HEI conversion that I did on that truck out there uh, a month or two ago. So I was glad to do that. Yeah, it's pretty simple. So we'll take a look at this and go through it. I understand that sometimes it's easier for someone to see something on paper uh, and figure it out that way. So not a problem. Uh, first thing you're going to look at is you just have uh, three components to hook up wiring wise. You got a coil, you got a module, and you have a distributor. That's all this does here. Um, so, one thing to mention is when I had that, uh, when I removed that lean burn system off that truck out there uh, that thing all that wiring on the lean burn is all um, it's all self-contained under the hood so I'm gonna add something here but it's all self-contained under the hood so you can take the lean burn and the air cleaner that's attached to it or however you want to do it you can just discard all that um, the only thing after your only thing afterwards that you're gonna be left with you're gonna have a like a, a hot wire that comes on with a key on that's gonna be coming out of the harness. If you look back through that video, I, you'll see it. I pointed that out and worked around with that several times. But uh, let's take a look here in, in depth and see how we hook things up. Sorry for the lighting. I'm missing a bulb up here. I think. Okay. Starting at the coil, you're going to have a coil here, and I used a, what's called an E-Core coil. Uh, it's not the old style can type of a coil. You can get those that are suitable to use with an electronic condition. If you want to, you know, kind of retain the nostalgic look, that's fine. But the one I used was just an OEM junkyard coil, like off of a mid-90s Ford or GM that uh, has electronic ignition and you try to get the harness with it too where it connects to it you'll only have three connections of course this is your spark plug where the plug wire goes in coil wire over here and you know how to do that it just goes to the distributor and then you have uh, two terminals here a connector with two terminals it may have three you may have to get on the internet and find out exactly what they all do but you uh, you may have one that's like a tack terminal uh, that's just self-explanatory that's just you can hook a tachometer to that and it runs your tack so that's that's really convenient but if you don't have a tack don't worry about it just use uh, don't use the wire just tape it up you know the other two that you want to make sure you know which are which just based, based on which coil you use like a, a GM or a Ford whatever and that connector yeah you're just gonna have positive and negative and that's common all coils. The coil has to have uh, 12 volts to it. That's key on. Uh, that means that it only gets power when you turn the ignition switch on. So uh, what I did, that's this wire here just for reference, goes into the same place. So basically you'll have two wires going into the positive. Just make sure you get 12 volts going to it when you turn the key on. Now talking about that lean burn, uh, that um, that thing has a 12 volts going to it. It's actually got a it's got a welded splice in there. When you get digging in there, you'll notice that thing's got like three or four wires going away out of one wire. So you can get rid of all those. Just make sure you have the one going to the alternator and the one that you want to use for this uh, still in place. Okay, let's look at this positive wire here connected at the coil. Comes out. And it goes around over here and it goes to one terminal on the module. I don't know if it's labeled, if these terminals are labeled. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. I did not label them because this is unbelievably easy to figure out. These modules have a distinctive shape to them. You see how it looks? It comes up here, flattens. It's like a, I don't know what that shape would be called, but it's, uh, you know, you can't get it wrong, really. <laughs> But very simple. You take the positive over here at the coil and you run it to this terminal. If you're looking at the module this way, this is the top of the module, four terminals, bottom right. All right. 
The next one above it, that's also very simple. Uh, you just come around and oops, hook it to the other terminal on the coil. That takes care of that. Positive, negative, positive, negative. All right. Now let's look at the other side of the module. You have two terminals over here. Now I cross these wires right here, right in this area. So you can kind of circle that. That's just a, they don't connect. They don't connect right there. They don't do anything but just, you know, that's just a, a, a crossover, it's not a junction. So what we do with these is we need to really look at this distributor. On Chrysler distributors, you usually always have a harness that comes out of here that's got two wires made into it. One of them's black or brown and one of them's orange and, or white. And it's got a terminal here that's kind of an unusual looking terminal. I've tried to represent it as well as possible. But it's got like a uh, exposed ground right here. Or not, well, not ground, but it's just one terminal's exposed, one terminal's internal. And you need to try to get the other piece of that which connects to it. Try to round it up so it makes it nice and neat. It just plugs right in there. And uh, this one, like if this is black, see how this looks kind of black? This one will be black or brown or whatever. But match the colors, the brown to brown, orange to orange, or white to white. Don't put, you know, don't put black to white, black to orange, whatever. Don't do that, you know. If you use this right piece of little harness, uh, you can anyway. It won't let you. It's already made the right way. So that just connects here to the distributor. And you can hardwire it in. You don't have to necessarily do this. It just makes it neater and it's easier, you know, if you ever have to service a distributor and take it out, it just makes it easier to unplug it. So you come over here, not minding these, and like the black one up here, it's on the top. This is black on the top up here. You see I've shaded that in. Pay attention to this very carefully. Black on top, black on top. Black goes to the top left terminal right there okay if you drop down to the bottom left terminal don't mind that comes down that's the white or the orange wire and it's the bottom one here it needs to be white or orange all the way into the distributor so you know not trying to be uh, preachy but do it exactly like this and it'll work so let's follow this again. Just to recap here. Two terminals on the coil. Maybe three, but don't worry about the tack terminal. Make sure you get 12 volts to the coil, positive side, to run it with a key on. Come over here. That's your negative, that's your positive. Come over here, that's black. Black's on top on this diagram. Black, orange. Now. Let me just write this so you guys can kind of be easier for you here. You can see me do it. Make sure I'm right. Okay. Could be brown, could be white, but you'll know the two colors. So yeah, guys, that's it. That's it. Uh, that's how you do it. Now, I want to tell you again, remind you to make sure that wherever you mount this module, it's got a very good ground, and it has a way to dissipate the heat. It needs to be mounted uh, well. Now you see on my videos, I got that nice bracket out of the junkyard. Now I know people, some people don't like that. They say that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. And it is, but it works good. And just for a truck, it's fine, you know. But you you can do it however you want to do it. You don't have to do it mounted on that bracket. But the main things you just remember is all the stuff besides the distributor, which it has a ground already because of where it's at. All the stuff here has to be grounded. HEI ignitions depend on a good ground to work properly. So make sure the coil is in a bracket of some sort that is connected to the frame or the body of the car and got a good ground and also the module make sure it's wherever you decide to mount it 
And don't mount it someplace like right on the engine block that's going to get a lot of heat because that'll make them fail prematurely. They're very reliable, but they do not like being overheated, and that's why that you use that uh, heat sink compound. You remember if you look back on that video, I had to make that video, I got the wrong stuff. I got dielectric grease. That's not at all the same stuff as heat sink compound. You got to have heat sink compound. You can get it at Radio Shack or someplace like that. And just coat that thing on the bottom and mount it on preferably a pretty large piece of metal that will radiate heat away. So. Uh, I appreciate all you guys that watch my videos, and I know there's a large percentage of you that uh, would rather me go into detail about this stuff. And the reason I do that, the reason I take so long to make, make videos and, and, and go into detail about stuff is because, you know, there's some people that don't have the patience to sit through a video, and they just, you know, rush through stuff, and they're going to probably F it up when they try to do it, you know, but I'm telling you guys the right way to do this thing because I just, I just did it, so, uh, and I research what I do before I even tell anybody how to do stuff, I do it myself and I research it, but I know how to do this stuff, so, whether it be doing wheel bearings or timing belts or working on carbs or anything like that, you can trust me that I'm telling you the real deal, so I hope, I hope you have patience to Sit, sit through and watch this and someone uh, dear to me watches my videos uh, kind of made mention uh, recently they said uh, they said I tend to act, emphasize things sometimes and that's why I said being preachy I hope you all don't take that the wrong way I just try to raise my voice a little bit and emphasize things is you know I don't want you to screw up so when I tell you stuff like on this junction thing or this, this is not a junction down here, when I say it's not a junction, you know, don't take that me being rude or being mean. It's just me trying to make sure you understand that is not a junction. Because <laughs> I'd rather meet somebody tell me that, you know. I, I don't want anybody to get kind of upset or think, yeah, yeah, well, you're, you're sure preaching to us. But I'm just trying to help everybody out, you know. So that'll get you going, everybody, and especially to the viewers who want to see this. I hope you can use this. Um, feel free to replay this video as many times as you want to, over and over and over, if you want to. <laughs> but it's finally cooled down. It's about uh, 9.30 now, and I'm going to go out and do some putting away stuff in the garage now that it's cool and all that thing. And, so I'll make a video maybe about that when I finish up. So I, hopefully I can avoid dropping something and waking everybody up. But I just heard something sound like gunshots. It wasn't gunshots. I think it was fireworks. But I just heard that a few miles away. Either that or somebody dropped the bomb on us finally. So, All right, guys. Well, here it is. Hope you enjoy. Glad to do it for you. Tune in next time. See you around.